Angular velocity describes how fast an object is rotating. Here we can see the record on the right has a higher angular velocity than the record on the left. Just like with linear velocity, the angular velocity is the angular displacement divided by the period of time. We represent angular velocity with the Greek letter omega. So the angular velocity, omega, is equal to the angular displacement, delta theta, divided by the period of time, delta t. Here's an example. This record starts at an angular position of 30 degrees. The record rotates for two seconds and ends up at a final angular position of 270 degrees. What was the angular velocity of the record during that time? The angular velocity would be the angular displacement, 270 degrees minus 30 degrees, over the period of time, 2 seconds. That equals 240 degrees divided by 2 seconds, or 120 degrees per second. That means that every second, the record rotated 120 degrees. Degrees per second is one unit we can use, but the SI unit for angular velocity is radians per second. So let's change the units on our axis to radians. If this record rotates half of a revolution in four seconds, then the angular velocity of the record was pi radians divided by four seconds, or pi over four radians per second. That's about 0.79 radians per second in decimal form. Here's one more example. Let's say we're listening to this record and we want to measure its angular velocity. If we watch the line on the record and observe that it rotates five revolutions in nine seconds, then the angular velocity would be the angular displacement, five revolutions, over the period of time, nine seconds. That gives us 0.56 revolutions per second. But let's convert that into a more common unit. If we take five revolutions divided by nine seconds, and we multiply it by the unit relationship of 60 seconds per one minute, then we can cancel out the units of seconds on the top and bottom. We can multiply the fractions, then we get 33 and a third revolutions per minute. Revolutions per minute is a pretty common unit, and we abbreviate it as RPM. So this record has an angular velocity of 33 and a third RPM. That's how fast most records spin while they're playing. The record actually tells you what speed to use on the label, and most record players have a button for 33 and a third RPM. Actually, it usually just says 33 to keep things simple, but it's really 33 and a third. Some records are meant to be played at 45 RPM, so there's a button for that too. If you play a record too fast or too slow, the music won't sound right, so it's important that the angular velocity is perfect. You might have noticed that this record is rotating in the clockwise direction, and we said earlier that clockwise is the negative direction. So is the angular velocity actually negative 33 and a third RPM? Now's a good time to review the difference between angular speed and velocity. Remember that speed is a scalar and only includes the magnitude, while velocity is a vector and includes magnitude and direction. If the angular speed of the record is 33 and a third RPM, the angular velocity has to include a direction. For a rotational motion, it could be 33 and a third RPM counterclockwise or clockwise. Or instead, it could be positive or negative 33 and a third RPM based on our axis, where the positive and negative tell us the direction. So this record has an angular speed of 33 and a third RPM, and we could say the record is rotating counterclockwise or clockwise. Or if we use a rotational axis, we usually say that counterclockwise is the positive direction and clockwise is the negative direction. So here, the record has an angular velocity of positive 33 and a third RPM. And here, its angular velocity is negative 33 and a third RPM which is the direction records actually spin while they're playing.